What's happening guys, it's Boxing Lowdown and I'm back here with another video. Now this is my post-fight review to Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz 2, the rematch taking place in Saudi Arabia last night. Now, what a victory, what a victory. It was revenge for Anthony Joshua. He managed to reclaim his WBA, IBF and WBO heavyweight titles by defeating Andy Ruiz via points decision. Very impressive performance from Anthony Joshua in my opinion. He went back to basics, you know, he um, stayed behind the jab, had a sharp left hand jab, like he was ramming it in Ruiz's face. And um, he pretty much won, he didn't win every round, let's not say that, but he definitely won the majority of the rounds. He won like probably, on my card, I think he only lost like two or three rounds throughout the whole fight. I think that Ruiz um, was troubled by AJ's movement. He was troubled by the left jab that was constantly going in his face and uh, the occasional right hand as well, which cut Ruiz at the end of the first round. Anthony Joshua went back to basics in this fight and um, he boxed smart. He did what he had to do, considering that he was, you know, decisively beaten by this guy six months ago at Madison Square Garden. He took the immediate rematch, which a lot of people would have advised him not to do. Uh, he did that. And, you know, he went in there and he, he boxed to he boxed a plan. He did what he had to do. And he's now the two time heavyweight champion of the world. So, you know, congratulations to Anthony Joshua, man. It was a very good performance. And um, it was the logical performance, actually. When you, um, when you look at it, considering how he lost last time by trading up close quarters with Andy Ruiz, by, um, you know, like going blow to blow with somebody that has quicker hands with you, who's a very good forward counter puncher. It was never a good idea for Anthony Joshua to do that. And he made that mistake in the first fight when he had Ruiz hurt in the third round. So this time he's obviously learned from his mistakes. He went back to the drawing board with his trainer, Rob McCracken. They analyzed what went wrong and they corrected it in the rematch. So, you know, AJ was a lot leaner in this fight. You know, he was, um, he was, more, he was motivated. You know, he wasn't looking past his opponent. All of these things you can say he wasn't really like that in the first fight, considering that Ruiz was a late replacement for Jarrell Miller. So in my prediction video, I did say that um, Anthony Joshua would, like, if I had to make a prediction, I did say that Anthony Joshua would win it on points. But I wasn't confident in that prediction, so I'm not going to go around claiming that, you know, like, I'm a master of predictions or anything like that. But I did say that Anthony Joshua will probably win this on points by boxing, um, boxing to the correct game plan. And that's pretty much exactly what he did. You know, he, he didn't go in there looking to trade. There were times during the fight where Andy Ruiz was actually dragging AJ into, he was trying to make him trade, but he didn't do it enough in my opinion. He was very, we all know that he had slow feet already, Andy Ruiz, but he was um, overweight, even more overweight than he was in the last fight. Um, he was heavier in this fight by 15 pounds. Uh, there was speculation with regards to whether he had any like weights or anything in his pocket, considering that he didn't take any of his clothes off on the way in. But when you looked looked at him in the ring, he definitely looked heavier than he did last time, and that is saying something. So um, I was very disappointed with Ruiz's excuses afterwards, actually, as well. When you look at what he was saying in the post fight interview, he was saying stuff like, "I didn't train properly, and you know I was overweight, and next time I'll take it more serious." And I was just like, I was just baffled because I was thinking like, why is he? Like, why is he not taking it seriously this time? Like, why is he not going into this fight, you know, with the underdog mentality again? Because he knew that people were picking AJ to win. He was saying all the right things going into the rematch, saying that, you know, he's approaching this fight the same way, he's going to do this and that, and he'll be even more of an animal because he's had more time to train. In the ring, it just didn't show for him at all. I mean, he was disappointing with regards to not being able to cut the ring off effectively. Um, he didn't show any head movement. He didn't show any feints walking in. He was really just a plodder and he was just trying to walk AJ down, which I understand, he I mean, he, he did knock him out last time, but there was no like innovation there to try and get inside and work his way to the body or head. At times he did manage to get inside, but that was more when AJ was probably taking a breather from like some of the movement that he was doing. Andy Ruiz didn't really do anything to get himself inside and bang away. Um, he landed a few good body shots. I think he was in round eight and he definitely won that round for me. But yeah, overall, I was disappointed in his performance, man. I thought that he would have really tried to stick it on AJ a bit more. And, um, you know, maybe he was discouraged. I mean, when you look at it at the end of the first round, AJ landed, he was dominating the round and then a solid right opened up a big cut over Ruiz's eye. It wasn't like no little nick. It was actually quite a big cut. And his corner did well to, um, you know, tame it throughout the fight. But when AJ landed occasionally, the cut did reopen. So... 
um, yeah, I was disappointed in Andy Ruiz's performance and he was screaming for a trilogy in the third fight. But, I mean, I mean it, to be fair, it is one apiece between the two, but that fight was so dominant. It wasn't particularly entertaining from a neutral perspective, um, but it was so dominant. I mean, do people want to see that straight away? Even his trainer, Manny Robles, said that they need to go back to the drawing board, maybe have a fight or two in between, and then pursue the trilogy, which I think is a good idea, actually. There are still plenty of fights out there for Andrew Ruiz to have, and um, he's still a good fighter. Like, let's not get it twisted. Like, there'll be people coming out saying that, you know, Andy Ruiz ain't that good a fighter now, like, he's been this and that. But, nah, I think Andy Ruiz is still a good fighter, and I still think he's a player in the heavyweight division. A loss doesn't define, like, your standing in the division, as we've seen with Anthony Joshua and others. So, um, yeah, I think Andy Ruiz can come back from this, but he's going to have to take it more seriously, man. He's going to have to, you know, like, get back to proper training, get back to having a game plan, and and taking the sport seriously because he's seen the heights where he can get to. But I just thought it was disappointing that in your first defence of the heavyweight crown, you know, you've come out and you've admitted that you wasn't taking, like, you didn't train properly and next time you'll be this and next time you'll be that. And, you know, it's difficult, man. So, yeah, I was a bit disappointed in that. But Anthony Joshua, you know, he boxed to, he boxed to orders, man. He did what he had to do. And like I said in my prediction video, I did say that Anthony Joshua will need to make it boring. He will need to frustrate Ruiz. He will need to, you know, fr like stick the jab in his face and not get involved in exchanges and keep it long and use your height and reach. And that's everything that he did. You know, he did that. He did that throughout the fight. And it didn't take a smart person to really, you know, say that Anthony Joshua needs to do that. I think we could all really, most people in the boxing like industry would have predicted that Anthony Joshua would have needed to do that. But, you know, he went out there, he did his thing. He didn't get the knockout as some people would have wanted, but... You know, styles make fights and Anthony Joshua box to orders. It's not a style that he's going to be replicating in all of his fights now. He's not all of a sudden going to be the heavyweight version of Floyd Mayweather. But I think in this particular fight, considering the short stature of his opponent, considering his style, he boxed to orders and that's what he was supposed to do. So here we go. Like, he's bringing the belts back home. Um, there are guys out there that everybody's going to want to see him fight. They're going to want to see him fight the winner of Wilder and Fury. They're going to want to see a Dylan White rematch. Usyk is the WBO mandatory, so that is going to be ordered. I think, believe the WBO have already ordered that. So um, Joshua's going to have to have a decision to make because he's also got an IBF mandatory coming up. So that will mean that one of the belts are likely going to have to be vacated. Um, he could fight Usyk next. Otherwise, he could fight Kubrat Pulev next. Pulev is definitely the more safer option. Um, I could see him going the Pulev route because with Pulev, I mean, um, I'd pick AJ to win that for sure. And with Usyk, I mean, if Usyk fights for the vacant title, probably against Chisora, then that means that the WBO title will stay within matchroom, and then that will mean that Joshua could fight the winner. So I could see AJ pursuing the IBF route more than the WBO route, but we'll see. I mean, the fight with Usyk would be a lot bigger than Pulev anyway. Uh, that would do big numbers over here, and it'll be very intriguing. I think a lot of people would like to see how that would go. So we know how talented Usyk is, but he hasn't taken a solid heavyweight punch yet. And, um, yeah, I mean, it remains to be seen what direction they're going. I think for now, Eddie Hearn, Anthony Joshua and everybody else are just going to enjoy the victory and um, make some plans for 2020. But, yeah, very good performance from Anthony Joshua, in my opinion. He did what I said he had to do. And, um, yeah, the show goes on. Like, who's he going to fight next? What's he going to do? I'm sure all of those, like, revelations will come to light early 2020. But, yeah, very good performance from Anthony Joshua. Andrew Ruiz I was a bit disappointed with, but... You know, he can come back from this and um, hopefully we can get him in a big fight soon because I do like watching him. I do like his style and I think he does have fast hands and he does have power as well. So, you know, imagine him against somebody like Dylan White if he's on form or whoever, Michael Hunter or Povetkin, whoever, Luis Ortiz. There are still fights out there to be made for all of these heavyweights, man. So it's a very good time to be a fan of boxing right now in the division and um, I'm looking forward to 2020 and some of these fights being made. But... In the meantime, drop your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Let me know what you think about Anthony Joshua's win over Andy Ruiz. Was you impressed? Did you think it was a bit underwhelming? Like, let me know, man. Drop them in the comment section below. I'll catch you all on the next one.